Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week. You know the story by now, it's the video where we go through all the little blibs and blobs of news stories that involve data that we couldn't squeeze into any other video. Today we want to talk about a few topics, a little bit of new product stuff, a little bit of news, but let's start off immediately with a story over here on Anantech, and which is to do with Broadcom pretty much lining out their entire Wi-Fi 7 lineup. That's right, uh, Broadcom have kind of detailed out a whole bunch of specifications, processors in the real tech uh, genre and a lot of the kind of promised things that we're going to see in this new protocol for wireless connectivity there being listed as you can see as the 802.11be moniker unlike the x that we've seen prior to that it does bring a lot of bandwidth um, and uh, encrypted data improvements there over wi-fi 6 and wi-fi 6e now again i although it's been listed on a bunch of other news websites i do strongly recommend this particular one because it really does go into some phenomenal detail about some of the stuff that they've highlighted there from some of the slides that were presented privately there if you head over to broadcom themselves they do do a whole like kind of bloggy post there where they talk about some of the improvements the product spotlight that sort of thing but this article here really does drill down quite deeply and doesn't talk too much about the distinct differences uh, available in terms of, say, uh, broader bandwidth there, the kind of more than quadruple potential bandwidth performance available over uh, Wi-Fi 7 over 6. But for that, I would recommend checking out an RF wireless article here on uh, RF Wireless World. And this article really does drill into some of the improvements that it brings along with a little table there. And as you can see, it does mention that data rate there of 9.6 gigabits. So again, you're talking 960 uh, megabytes there if you want to break it down to something a little bit easier to digest, which potentially leads to greater than Thunderbolt level uh, broader bandwidth coverage there at 4,600 megabytes per second across those different uh, frequencies. Again, covering um, up to the 6 gigahertz band there as well as well as improved modulation there and just general the frequency coverage there being a great deal broader but do bear in mind that the numbers i'm talking about here are uh, going to obviously be spread over the greater uh, combined coverage there highly unlikely one device will be able to entertain a, you know even a large degree of this so again wi-fi 7 kind of getting rid of a lot of the noise interference stuff that we've seen in Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, which we're already doing incredibly well against 5 and ACN and stuff like that. But again, do check out those articles linked in the description to learn a lot more about what Broadcom have got in line for 2024, the kind of planned launch date for a lot of this uh, client hardware that's going to be utilizing a lot of these controllers that they're putting out. Next up, new-ish product news there with something we've seen online from Synology a lot. And I really do mean a lot. I've counted probably more than 20 different e-shops and e-retailers and resellers around the world have started listing a new Synology hard drive there. Now, it is uh, still part of their existing enterprise-level hard drive lineup there. It's a 4TB drive. And again, I found links in different regions of the world all listing this drive. Uh, now, this is... Uh, kind of like a smaller tier capacity drive that's being added to their existing lineup of the 8, 12 and 16 TB drive there. And again, this has always been a bit of a hole in their lineup of drives there because, you know, their enterprise level drives uh, that are meant for those 2020 uh, excess level systems you know that's kind of that more strong compatibility model they're going for there and support but again these are usable on the bulk of their enterprise level solutions and although 8tb is a good drive there for a lot of users it's quite a big jump immediately so the idea that they've you know incorporated a smaller drive into this i know won't appease everyone because there's a lot of people going where are my 18 and 20 tb drive synology but still nonetheless it's nice that they're at least covering this area. And again, this information is pretty much confirmed there with different pricing based on different regions of the world. We've got Swedish sites, German sites, American sites, you name it, they're all on there and a breakdown of pricing all available. Again, no real official spreadsheets out there, no official confirmation from the brands there, but it's very hard to argue with this level of coverage of that particular part ID and SKU flying around the internet right now. Next up, you may have heard about this on a number of different news outlets, but the arguably rather controversial website Raid Forums has officially been shut down. Now, for those that aren't aware, Raid Forums was kind of a very illicit, kind of dark web while not being dark web uh, marketplace where you could effectively sell 
uh, data that you may have obtained illegally via ransomware, malware, and also people offering targets. It's quite a little bit of a black market there flying around there, pretty much publicly as well. Uh, the the main developer of it, the guy that put it all together at the age of just 15, has now been arrested. It was all put together in 2015. If you head over to BBC News, and again, lots of other outlets have covered this, it goes into a little bit more information about uh, how this all went down, how he was arrested, and a lot of information about the background of this site as well. And this is a website that it's strange that not a lot of people know about. As I mentioned, this is a non-dark web site that was quite publicly visible and clearly doing things outside of the law. So I'm very surprised it took this long. If you head over to the domain now, again, you've got the usual splash screen you see on a lot of these websites have been seized and effectively shut down by government organizations. This has been a cross-nation endeavor of different security uh, services from different countries all working together to effectively infiltrate and shut this website down and you know back up a lot of illegal claims because the idea is like a lot of torrent websites that really the site as long as they don't break the rules they can sit there in the background and go nope we've not actually done anything we're just getting ad revenue and stuff like that but in this case i'm surprised it went on for as long as it did and Regardless of your feelings about this, and let's be honest, it's a fairly dodge site for the most part. The fact that it went on for this long is certainly pause for thought. And just a couple of new products left to discuss. First, Sonnet, a brand I've not talked about on the channel for quite a while, has released quite an interesting little PCIe card. Uh, they've released a PCIe upgrade card with eight USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, all of which delivering 10 gigabits per second there in terms of connectivity. Now, from what I can see in the compatibility, this is largely going to be supported on most NAS platforms. So again, if you're someone that has a lot of external drives that you're going to be running for backups or for off-site work this isn't going to be incredibly appealing to you though it should be mentioned that the price tag of this card is a little higher than some of us would like knocking around for just under three hundred dollars again you can find out more about it on sonic's own website there now uh, another thing i'd like to talk about is sabrent again sabrent a brand who have been releasing so many new products recently i swear they've been on data news of the week at the tail end when we talk about new products for the better part of two months releasing different kinds of things and now they've moved into the world of of NAND, uh, not NAND, memory sticks there. That's right, they've released a new range of DDR4 sodium slots. Now, they're non-ECC, but they're bound to expand upon this now they've moved into it. This is 3,200 megahertz DDR4 sodium modules. Uh, they're producing them in 4, 8, and 16 gigabyte modules uh, right now. And although they're by no means the first on this market, given their large amount of history in the world of SSDs and a lot of their kind of uh, storage stuff that they've been utilizing, I'm surprised it took them this long to get into this. Now, um, what makes it any different? Well, a lot of the architecture is what you would expect from a sodium slot, but it does arrive with a metal, a metal heat dissipation slot there already wrapped around uh, this. Now, I'm hoping to utilize Sabrent um, SSD uh, sorry, uh, Sabrent memory and a lot of my SD upgrade guides for a lot of new uh, now solutions coming later this year and it's going to be interesting to see that the newer generation Celeron processors that are arriving on the market that support up to memory of this performance level even though the majority of the systems that are arriving with the newer generation Celerons are arriving with 2400 2600 megahertz memory so this could be a substantial upgrade uh, although I'm looking forward to seeing how these perform it is worth highlighting that right now at launch their price point if you compare it against uh, the like of the crucial alternatives there so if you look at $35 uh, for a long established these have been around in the market for maybe a year and a half to close to two years for $35 what else the Sabrent model is arriving on the scene at 44 that price is no doubt going to go down a little bit after launch this is obviously the uh, recommended retail price that RRP but once you move through each of those storage tiers as you can see 16 gig 74 versus 70 and I forgot to mention there is a Sabrent 32 gig module the price difference does scale up a little bit each time, but I do think that Sabrent price is going to come down uh, shortly after launch. And again, by launch, if you have a look, they're saying that availability 
it's still going to be a good month or two, I reckon, with the larger capacities obviously being the ones that are going to take the longest there. But still, nonetheless, Sprint is really becoming a jack-of-all-traders uh, brands go. And after all of that time, thinking of them as just the brand that produces docking stations, this has been an enormous change in their business and solution model in the last two and a half years. But this has been Data News of the Week. I hope you found this helpful. Again, subscribe, click like if you enjoyed it. Take advantage of the free advice section at NAS Compares. But otherwise, have a great Easter weekend, and I'll see you next week.